Well, good afternoon. Uh, this is the head coach's press conference for Thursday's opening session games featuring Washington and Arizona and Minnesota and UCLA. A couple of reminders, please remember to silence your cell phones and also a reminder that you are not permitted to film during these press conferences. You can take photos, but you are not permitted to film. Uh, I will provide a brief introduction for each head coach, and I'll ask for a comment from each of them. And then once we've introduced all four head coaches, we'll open the floor for your questions. Uh, once we get to that segment, please wait for a microphone, introduce yourself and who you're affiliated with, and then please direct uh, the question or identify who you're directing the question to. To my right, the Washington Huskies and Heather Tarr. Washington is 50 and 7 overall. They are the number three seed. This is their 14th Women's College World Series appearance and third straight. They defeated Kentucky in the Super Regionals. Uh, Coach Tarr is in her 15th season at Washington. Uh, Coach Tarr, if you could tell us a little bit about your journey to get here this year. Yeah, um, just really excited to be here and congrats to these three on bringing their teams as well and just honored to be up here amongst some amazing coaches and what an opportunity that we have before us as a program again to be back here. It was definitely not easy for us after graduating six seniors last year, five of whom started pretty much every single game for us and were a huge part of our last like four years teams. Um, so just really proud of our team, proud of our program to be able to achieve this, this opportunity and we have great pitching, great defense. We find ways to score runs, and um, just really excited for our women to be able to have this opportunity to continue to grow and learn together. Thank you, Coach Tarr. To Coach Tarr's right is Mike Candrea and the Arizona Wildcats. Arizona's 47 and 12, and they are the number six seed. This is their 23rd Women's College World Series appearance, first since 2010. They defeated Mississippi in the Super Regionals, Coach Candre is in his 34th year at Arizona. And Coach, if you could uh, talk a little bit about your return to Oklahoma City. Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's been a journey. Um, I think some journeys are more frequent than the last one, but uh, very rewarding to get back here and uh, very proud of this team. And I think um, the highlight of this team really for me is just their chemistry. Um, I think they've worked very hard to do the little things that it takes to get to this level. Um, just getting here is becoming tougher and tougher. And I think that's just a compliment to coaches that are sitting around here. Um, it's a compliment to the game, where our game has grown. And um, it is definitely a tough journey. And I think we've weathered the storm to this part. Um, we're looking forward to uh, meeting a conference foe uh, tomorrow. Uh, but we're very excited to uh, kind of get the ball rolling and seeing where we're at. Thank you, Coach Candrea. To his right is Kelly Inouye Perez and the UCLA Bruins. UCLA is 51 and 6 overall. They are the number two seed. This is their 29th Women's College World Series appearance and their fifth consecutive. They defeated James Madison in the Super Regionals. And Coach Perez is in her 13th season at UCL UCLA. Coach, could you tell us a little bit about being back here again? NCAA for hosting such a wonderful event. Also, shout out to USA Softball and the NFCA for just the opportunities and, and recognition they give to our student athletes. Same, I agree. All the coaches, the programs, it is a journey to be able to be a top eight, and we all strive to be able to do it. I think we all have our stories of how we get here, which is, um, you know, always exciting and, and personal, but, you know, we all persevere to be able to be here. Um, for us personally, we're a very balanced team. We have some speed and power. We have a staff with pitching, but uh, I think, you know, your ability to have a strong culture, ability to put the team before yourself is something that is just important for every program. Um, I think experience plays in. Your ability to have high expectations, but then to be able to put the work in to be able to get back to this point, knowing that everybody is talented in the country. And you can see that in our sport. Um, and I have a lot of respect for all the programs that are striving to be this top eight. Um, so we're excited. You know, we celebrate it. It's a new season. We want to get out there and just play our game and, and can't wait to get after it. Um, so we're excited to be here as well. Thank you, Coach. To our right is Jamie Traxel, the Minnesota Gophers. They are 46 and 12 overall. They're number seven seed. This is their first Women's College World Series appearance. They defeated the LSU in the Super Regionals. Uh, Coach Traxel is in her second season at Minnesota. 
And obviously you have a lot to talk about, so tell us a little bit about your season. <laughs> It, we're proud to be, you know, in, in the Women's College World Series, and I'm honored to be sitting up here a little bit starstruck because when, when I was young, I texted Kandrea earlier this, uh, this season. I was like, you're the first tapes I bought, and I was all about Arizona softball, and um, just to be up here, you know, it's, um, it's quite an honor, and I'm proud of our team. You know, this team has been through a ton, you know, the last couple of years, and we faced a lot of adversity this year, so... You know, each step of the way, I'm just proud of everything that they've been able to handle. And one of our themes this year was we kind of came together and figured it out in January. Our poster said, like, dream big. You know, why not us? And um, we told them, don't think, you know, don't be afraid to be great. And don't think for one second that you're not capable. And obviously, we had strong pitching coming back led by Amber Pfizer. Um, our defense has played consistent behind them. And we it's kind of the same way. We found ways to score runs. And so um, we're proud to be here. We're honored to be part of this group. But... You know, we want to come out here and represent the state of Minnesota the best way that we can and um, keep it a game of execution with a ton of emotions that come with being on this big stage. But um, we're not just happy to be here. We're going to come with our best stuff and, and see if we can make what we have with who we have good enough as we face the mighty UCLA Bruins. And we kind of told our kids, like, shoot, first time in program history, why not try to go slay the dragon, <laughs> the ultimate dragon? <laughs> Thank you, Coach. We'll open it up for questions. Cliff Brun, Associated Press, this is for Coach Traxel. It's not just the first time that Minnesota's been. You look back at what happened in 2017, you know, not even seated, having to go on the road when you're ranked number one in the country. You still had have some players who went through that, and you came in and had to pick up the pieces from that. Given all of that, what does this mean from that perspective? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you can't go backwards, and I wasn't part of that. And um, each story has a, each team has its own journey, its own identity. And um, I know that the players that were part of that, you know, feel a sense of like pride in the fact that they represent the teams that that came before them and that they were part of too. And and they should be and uh, feel that way. And so, you know, we take a lot of we take it personally that we were getting to represent some teams that came before us and some of the opportunities that maybe they didn't get and that we did, we did, did get and we earned. Jamie, Chris Long from KSTP Sports in Minneapolis. You mentioned trying to avoid the just happy to be here syndrome. How do you do that? What do you say to a team, especially with the emotion you guys carry through each of the last two weekends? Well, I think the last four weeks for us has um, helped us prepare as best we can. And I don't know that you're as ever prepared just walking into this, you know, this stadium and the magnitude of of being here, but you know, the last four weeks we've had something to play for. There's been expectations. There's been people talking about what's in front of us, and we've played in front of an electric crowd at home, and we've been fortunate to do that. And last week wasn't as much preparing for Super Regionals and post in um, LSU as it was controlling the emotions. Practice really didn't matter. It was just us controlling the emotions, making sure we have good conversations with our kids so that we could handle the magnitude of the situation when people are saying, man, you're two, two wins away from your dream. Now you're one win away from your dream. And um, I think the same will go for this weekend as well. And um, so some of our kids said, we're not always best on Friday. So we tell them, well, good, we don't play on Friday. We play on Thursday, <laughs> you know. Um, but we'll try to use every experience that we have and all the lessons learned to make sure that we come out ready to go because you don't get a game to get into this tournament because it's you have to be ready from the get-go. And um, we'll do the best we can to be prepared for that and keep it a game of execution and go out there and put our best foot forward. Um, Katie Barnes, ESPNW, uh, for Coach Tar. Uh, you have two really phenomenal pitchers. Um, some would say you've got two aces. How do you make the determination of who gets the ball um, in the circle? And how do you then also balance the personalities of those pitchers? Um, because, you know, sign of a great pitcher is they always want the ball, right? And so how do you make sure that both of them are always ready to go? I think it's just this, this season and last season really helped Taryn and Gabby understand their roles and who they are as pitchers. I mean, Taryn carried us in the whole 2017 season. And then last year, she sustained a little bit of an injury, maybe halfway through our conference season, and Gabby had to carry us. So they both had those experiences, which is an amazing you know, thing to have as a coach. But I just think in general, they've learned to work together and understand that what they each do are, are different, two different things. And they can just you know, be available and ready 
as called and they're not fragile. They're able to adapt and compensate whether one has to come in and close or you know, they don't know about an hour before the game starts as who's, has, as who's starting the game. Barry Trammell with the Oklahoma. And at the women's final four, Muffet McGraw brought up the issue of, of uh, not enough female coaches in female sports. Um, for Jamie and Kelly and, and Heather, how do you guys feel that's going in softball? Is, is it going in the right direction? Is it where it needs to be? Or do we need more female coaches uh, in, in the sport of softball? Let's start with Coach Traxel. <laughs> You're welcome. Let's start with Kelly. You know, uh, to answer the question, my personal opinion, I, I just think, you know, having the best coach for the job is always is always the most important. Um, I always encourage um, our own student athletes, you know, being able to be a Division One coach is a real job now, in your, and even the opportunity to be the real breadwinner in the family. So um, I think it's a great opportunity for those that have played the sport to continue to give back. They're in great programs. They're learning a lot. I think they're not only softball experiences, but their life experiences can help develop these young females to be the best they can be, but I also played, you know, for a male coach growing up as well, and, and just good coaches are good coaches. They're, qu they're focusing on, on the people, the development. Um, they, we all, you know, there's so much information, I believe, in the game now. Everybody knows how to play the sport, but it's how you manage your people. It's how you grow your individuals through these hard lessons on this big stage that I think truly great coaches, you know, leave their mark. Um, so, yes, I believe always I encourage our own student athletes to give back to the sport and I celebrate that, that it is a real opportunity now for them to do it. And there's a lot of support, budgets, facilities, salaries for them to be able to pursue it. So I hope we continue to see the sport grow and the female uh, coaching generation continue to grow. Um, but once again, I'm looking for the best coaches that can represent on this at this highest level. And uh, it's not just about the sport. It's not about your knowledge. It's about how you grow your individuals, in my opinion. Coach Sarr? Well, I maybe have a little bit of a different way of thinking about it. I think the thing that I, I hope for maybe 25 years from now is that our sport continues to gain the respect and a genderless respect um, with regards to bat and ball. And I would just predict that in 25 years, you're going to want some of the Major League Baseball infielders to play like some of our infielders. And some of that game to be able to like aspire to be like our game and so that there are men in our sport and I think it's really good for cultures to have both genders you know maturing young women and I would say why why not women coaching men that's I guess where I would like to take the conversation and not try to eliminate men from women's sports I would say why don't we be more inclusive and respectful about what women can add to men's situations but you know, another thing too, Coach Kendra can probably speak to this. Um, I don't know if a lot of men in this game would want to go back to coaching men. <laughs> Coach Draxel, you want to take a run at this now? <coughs> I got you out of it. You did. Well, we're, we're coming back to him. <laughs> you know, I'm kind of going to echo what Kelly said. It's just the right person for the job. Um, I also believe in having a well-balanced staff, you know, with the way that society is, I think having good men around to, to be good examples to treat these young women with respect and, and how they should be talked to and cared for and, uh, and with good boundaries and stuff to show them, like, to be around, like, good people and how they should be treated is important, too. And, um, but, and just challenging your kids to be the best versions of themselves and want to be great on and off the field and in everything that they do and everything's a representation of their character and so that when they leave your program that they are confident and capable to go out to the next phase of their life and to make their own choices so they own, can own their own happiness. And some people see that in, in women and some people see that a little bit through men and so I think regardless of who the head coach is, maybe having a good balance in your staff. So there's always someone that your players can identify with and feel comfort with as they grow through their, their collegiate experience. Coach Candre, I do feel it's important that you weigh in on this as well. Well, I, you know, I, I think it's um, the one thing that I've seen in the sport is that we've, we've grown a lot more good female coaches. And I think when I got into the game early on, um, that maybe not had been the case because um, most of us came from baseball and it was pretty natural. But I think in today's world, 
um, well, I, I mean, I've been around enough to see these young ladies grow, and I think we have some very capable females that are really good coaches that understand how to manage people, and um, I'm happy for that. But I'm also a believer that you want to, if you're looking for someone, you want the very best fit for your program. And to me, it's, 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 it's the person that's going to be able to de develop these young ladies for life after softball. Um, one thing about our sport right now, I wish we had more opportunities uh, for them to play professionally and actually make a living. But um, until that happens, I think my major job is to get them ready for life after softball. And, and if I can be a good mentor and a good role model for them, uh, whether you're female or male, I think that's what's important. Norma Gonzalez with the Arizona Daily Star. Um, Coach Kendra, last time you saw Washington, you guys were one hit away from taking game one and maybe even game two. But since then, you took two away from UCLA on the road and have remained um, undefeated in the postseason. Have you turned around enough to be able to maybe actually beat Washington tomorrow? Well, I know, there's a lot of- Are you me that? <laughs> um, we would not be here if we didn't think that we were capable, um, I think. The great thing about this stage um, and the thing that we grew from uh, that experience was just being able to handle the big moment. And I think now our kids are going to, their motors are going to run even a little bit higher. And when you get here, that I think is the key. You know, we all have good pitching. We all play good defense. It's going to come down to the timely hit. Um, but I think the big thing is to be able to handle the emotions of the game because at this stage right now, um, this game is, is – that's the center of it, you know, and if the game gets too quick and you can't slow it down, then it's awfully tough to be successful. So I think we've grown in that regard. Um, I think physically we're, you know, hopefully a little better team than we were. I mean, that's our goal, but I think mentally right now, I think our kids have kind of figured out what each of them have to do to kind of slow the game down and be able to handle the big moment, and we'll see. And as a follow-up, Coach Tar, uh, Arizona has been – on a roll on hitting throughout the postseason, you guys have been shutting down bats. What are you sort of looking forward to tomorrow? I think every single game that we play in our conference tends to come down to execution and the ability to get, you know, find a way to win the game. And no matter who we play and, you know, who we, who we face, it's going to come down to that. So I'm just excited for our team to continue to compete and be able to play a quality opponent. Um, that we know and um, just go to battle. Marin Angus, Softball America. For Coach Candrea and Coach Inouye Perez, we've seen this game grow so much uh, over the last few years. And if you guys could speak about maybe the parity of the game, you two just played really non traditional teams in Super Regionals and Ole Miss and JMU. And just talk about how much the game needs to grow and expand and have those other schools start competing at this level. Coach Perez, we'll start with you. Um, I think it's a true comment. We played <laughs> what you could call non-traditional in that there, there were some firsts. But um, at the need to grow, I think the sport has definitely grown. I think the, the playing field is definitely, you can see it. It's very true from coast to coast. You know, when I played, it was very dominated with the Pac-12 when, or Pac-10, whatever, when I played. Pac-8. Pac-8. <laughs> <laughs> it was a while ago. But, um, but to, see the, to, to see the sport grow, to your point, though, is um, I celebrate it, and I say that always. Um, it's more of a challenge. The road to get here is truly just a different road map. You know, I talked to Coach Candre about this. Uh, it's just a different time and age. Um, but nothing changes the history um, of our sport. You know, very proud to have the history and tradition of what was established in the roadmap to get to where we are in the history of the Pac-12. Nothing, nothing more than that, but we celebrate the fact that there's more opportunities. There's great programs, there's great coaches, there's great competition. The regional, super regional, you know, we got to be a part of the first uh, time it changed to the best two out of three in the championship game. So the, the game has evolved. Um, very fortunate to be able to be a part of it, to see it grow, um, and a great deal of respect for the investment that schools and conferences are putting into our sport and to the point where ESPN, you know, how they're backing literally the road to get here is just phenomenal for our sport. There's a lot of people that are watching softball in their living rooms that, that we didn't have before. And we, and we celebrate that for our sport, which is always great for our student athletes 
and great for our programs, ultimately, um, to be able to say softball is a real sport that people love to watch. And the only way you have that is we had to make the sport a little more exciting. The ball had to change, the mound had to change, TV coverage was real, parity is important, everyone loves to see that, and I think that's great for the sport. Coach Kandre? Well, I, I totally agree. You know, I always kind of look back at some benchmarks that have kind of changed um, college softball, and um, the first one, I think, is ESPN. Um, I think, you know, I can remember back when we had one game on television, and if you were lucky to get in the championship game, that was it. But today, softball is a household sport that <laughs> everyone's watching. Um, I got a call yesterday from a gentleman that I knew who he was. Um, I answered the phone, and it was Johnny Bench, and I'm going, wait a minute. <laughs> Are you talking about the Johnny Bench? Oh, yeah. And he was talking about softball and how – Five years ago, he never really watched the softball game, but now he's just absolutely thrilled about the quality that he sees of the athlete. And we've all known that it's been there, but I think it's been um, ESPN that came in. And then for me, I really believe it was the um, SEC getting into softball and putting in some money into facilities, into salaries, into a lot of areas that I think have helped grow this sport, you know, and um, those are the two benchmarks that I kind of look at as far as why we're where we're at right now. I think this sport right now is absolutely in the best place that it's ever been. And we've got, we've got great athletes, we've got great coaches, we've got, we're getting great facilities around the country. And I think people are starting to recognize that, you know, maybe this could be the best sport right now in the NC2A on the female side. I'm not taking anything away from basketball or anyone else, but I'm just saying right now, um, these young ladies can play this game at a really high level. And I think people are starting to understand that and enjoy it. Um, Minneapolis Star Tribune. Jamie, uh, 28 non-conference games all away from home, some neutral site. You played seven super regional teams and three of these people on the road. What was the philosophy of scheduling? We had the team to to try to host a regional tournament and to put together the best schedule. And the, I mean, you can only do what you can do um, at the time because you don't know how other teams will fare. And a lot of the teams we played were really successful, so that always helps, especially down the road. And so it was go out and to be the best, you have to play the best and put together a schedule that if we did our job and uh, we had some success and got enough Ws that we'd be in contention to host a, a regional tournament. And um, the way everything played out, obviously at some point we thought, man, maybe we're around the eight mark or eight to 10 mark and, and then how we finished the season. And again, it's out of your control because you don't have anything to say about that. But we just wanted to put our team with who we had at the, at the time that I did put it together that you know, we thought we could do something special this year. And if we did our job and with the schedule that we had. Katie Barnes again from ESPNW for um, Coach Perez. You know, Rachel Garcia obviously had a huge season for you last season. She had another big season this year. Um, how has her game evolved uh, year over year, and what has that meant uh, to your program's success so far? Yeah, I think um, I agree. She's had, you know, just a quality career, and I first want to be able to just say I'm so proud of her because she came in. Um, at the top of her game in her freshman year, just, you know, next, she was going for a CIF championship, leaving the next day for junior national team and tore her ACL and meniscus. And to be able to come back from that and to be able to get to the level that she did <clears throat> was just phenomenal. So that's, it's one thing. The two things that I think have been game changers for her this year is uh, she's just added to her toolbox. So she has, she has more, she has a drop and she has um, the off speeds that have complemented her game. Um, and then the second thing is I've just really paired her up with Lisa, and uh, I think it's been game changing <clears throat> in that, you know, Lisa knows how to win. And Lisa has a competitive edge about her that I believe uh, was something that I really believe Rachel and Megan and Holly, our pitching staff, could really benefit from. So I made the transition to have Rachel work and all of them work with Lisa, um, both mentally, physically, um, on just what it would take. And, and I believe they're all better, stronger, more fit, mentally tougher than they were. Um, last year, um, and, and I do credit the work that, they, that they've put in with Lisa to be able to be who they are right now. So I just think she's in a better place. 
Um, she has a staff, so she hasn't pitched her a whole year. You know, you know, there's opportunities, and we definitely gave the ball to other pitchers, which has allowed us to be able to be better as a unit. Um, so those, all those things tie into her just being able to have another successful year. But when it comes comes down to it, yeah, Rachel has been literally our go-to girl, and, and I look forward to her getting out here and competing this weekend. Thank you. Any other questions? Marin has a question. <laughs> Coach Tar, it's the 10-year anniversary of the national championship. Has that been a topic of discussion throughout this season? And if it has, like, how do you handle it? It, it sounds like a lot of pressure. Um, well, we remember it. It doesn't seem like it was 10 years ago. <laughs> we talk about that team a lot, always. And a lot of those women are around our women a lot because they still live in the area. But, I mean, it's just a mark in time. I mean, hopefully it doesn't keep going that long and it becomes like a 20-year anniversary <laughs> before we find a way to win another one. But it's really special for a program like ours to achieve that. Um, not saying that we can't do it every single year, but I think just where we live geographically, how to build a schedule. Um, you know, we're in a way probably the farthest away from geographically where the genesis of some of the RPI points uh, exist, if you know what I'm talking about, and you look at the map. So it's really hard to continue to do that. Um, but, you know, to get to the World Series, you have a chance to get, you know, be in it and, and win it. But I just think it's, we don't feel that. We feel excited for our program and excited for our women to be able to look up to those women who did win that. Um, and we continue to aspire to do things like that every year. Go ahead. Jamie, what is an opportunity like tomorrow against this team in this arena mean for a player like Amber Pfizer? Um, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Pfizer? You know, she's... She's a difference maker in a program, you know, no question. And pitching, great pitchers can do that. And it's been cool to be part of seeing her development. Piper Ritter, who's been with Minnesota since she played, you know, um, we kind of joke. When I first got here, Piper was my first phone call. And I just joke, say, all you do is spit out all Americans all the time. And um, with everything that's happened over the last couple of years, like, Pfizer's put this program on her back. And it started last year once we got into conference so that team could get their legs underneath them a little bit. And then we were able to compete for a championship our last three weekends of that season. And then everything she's done this year and who she's had to go up against. And every time she's had the ball, she's given us a chance to win. And we kind of keep telling her, it's like, she's good, but she still doesn't really know how good she is. And I think that's a kind of a, one of the biggest compliments you could give someone, let alone someone who's done what she's done for this program. because um, she's led us to this point. And so we want her to make sure she just enjoys it, relaxes and try to recreate something. and. Uh, one weekend's never going to define you because everything she's done to help lead this program to this point um, is special in its own right. And it was history making and memories that will last a lifetime. So we want her to free herself up, go out there, and um, do what she does best and let the results take care of themselves. But um, she's, has, she's not a player who wants to be good. She wants to be great, and she's put the work in to do that. So proud to have her lead us out on the field tomorrow against UCLA and, and give her best stuff. Oh, good. All right. Thank you very much.